watching News 3 HD Live at 5. Well, we've come up the stairs here mm -hmm. at MOCA. It gives you an even better view here of downtown State Street. In all of Madison's history, there is one tumultuous month that changed life forever on the UW campus. It was May of 1970. Author and historian Stu Levitan wrote about it for the cover article for this month's edition of Madison Magazine. He brought the memories back to life for us when we talked with him on Bascom Hill. Forty years ago is a little different scene on this spot than it is right now. Well, to uh, steal from Charles Dickens, it was the best of time and it was the worst of time. And if we were out here in May 1970 and walked up this hill, we'd be kicking up tufts of tear gas because Madison was burning, the National Guard were in town, the city was in insurrection. We had, the, we had some great social things going on, but overall, it was not a good time to be in Madison, Wisconsin. What was it about May, the month of May 1970, that was so significant? In three words, Cambodia and Kent State. On May 1st, the morning after President Nixon announced we were going into Cambodia, Mayor Bill Dyke proposed to ban parades. Four days later, after the shootings at Kent State, he was calling for the National Guard. And by the evening of Monday, May 4th, we had affinity gangs uh, throwing rocks at cops. We had cops pumping tear gas at kids. And for the next week, it was all hell broke loose. This was happening all over the country. It, it happened all over the country. Here, it ramped up. Uh, think more quickly than other places because we had that long preparation. Uh, in the month of April, there, were, there was a rampage up State Street, $100,000 in uh, damage to various storefronts. We'd had the black student strike. We had the TAA strike. Of course, we'd had the whole history of the anti-war movement from the mid-60s. So when, Kent, when Cambodia and then Kent State happened, there were people ready to jump on it and, uh, and ride it as far as it could go. And what was the most pivotal moment of that month, do you think? Well, when, when Kent State happened, it went from demonstrations to riots. And the evening of uh, Monday, May 4th, started with a rally behind the Union Terrace. Jim Rowan, who is the contributing editor of the Daily Cardinal, would later be Paul Soglin's chief aide, was one of the speakers. And then all of a sudden, somebody from the Mother Jones Revolutionary League said, let's go over to Army Math. And they go to Army Math, and the, and, and the police are there, and they push them off. And then we start with the rocks and the tear gas. And it's later that evening that Kroger's is firebombed. Uh, we have people throwing Molotov cocktails in a home in Nakoma. They were firebombing homes in Nakoma because that's where the head of the Air Force ROTC lived. We had the police pumping tear gas into the Memorial Union. They ripped plywood off the uh, uh, Mifflin Co-op and pumped some really toxic tear gas in. As I said, by Wednesday, we had 1,800 National Guardsmen in, in this city on this campus, all around downtown, and even as far west as Monroe Street, because the draft office was out by Breeze Terrace. So we had pitched battles between kids and cops, the, the militants and the militia, these roving battles all through downtown, rocks and tear gas and tear gas and rocks, National, Heli National Guard helicopters overhead with their uh, searchlights piercing the darkness, looking for groups of students. It was a very tense time. It's hard to believe. It's, it's hard to look back and, and hear people talk about, oh yeah, back in the 60s and 70s, the good old days. Well, some of the days were pretty good, but the period of the first couple of weeks of May 1970, the city was on fire. What a contrast. It was the worst of times, and it was the best of times. It was a glorious time for music in Madison. I, I would argue that the month of May 1970, the greatest single month in the history of Madison live music. On May 1st, Sly and the Family Stone at the Dane County Coliseum. May 2nd, the next night, same place, Jimi Hendrix at the Dane County Coliseum. Steppenwolf at, at uh, coming to town. Um, Charlie Musselwhite at the Nitty Gritty. A couple of weeks later, on the 23rd, the Jefferson Airplane at the field house. Not an urban legend. <laughs> Not, what happened afterwards is, is remarkable. After the Jefferson Airplane played the field house, Jack Cast and Yorma Kalkinen over to the nitty gritty where they sit in with Luther Allison <laughs> until two in the morning. This is a remarkable thing. It actually happened. We had some great social things going on. It was uh, May Day. The Madison Alliance for Homosexual Equality had May Day on May 1st. And this was when, you know, during the 60s, a lot of the campus was still very closeted. There were careers that were ruined because people were still in the closet. By May 1970, uh, people were out and proud, and they were out for good. Uh, we had one of the first women's liberation conferences on campus that month. Uh, 
the, now remember, the city was a much smaller city, about 170,000 people. Uh, the city essentially only went from West Town to East Town. They were literally on the city's borders. The Beltline went from Highway 51 only as far as Nakoma Road. <laughs> Downtown was still the dominant uh, shopping destination, and newspaper ads didn't even give addresses. It would just say Carmen's downtown or on the square. But of course, we have West Town and East Town, and pretty soon that whole uh, retail uh, makeup is, is shifting as well. Quite a month. A great month. It was an outrageous month. Kind of thing we like to look back and remember, but not necessarily live through again. Yeah, absolutely. A fascinating time. It really and you can was. read more of Stu's article in the May edition of Madison Magazine. Can't miss it with that bright lemon cover. That's right. <laughs> and a young Paul Sagan right here.